Hey guys, how's it going? So this right here is the Rainbow 2 Pro controller made by Big Big One. Actually, believe it or not, Big Big One reached out to me and asked me, did I want to review the Rainbow 2 Pro controller on my YouTube channel? And I was like, sure, why not? And I'm really excited because this is the first time that I actually had a company reach out to me. So my channel's getting somewhere. And I appreciate all you guys who watch all my channel, who watch my channel and find some of my inputs helpful and give me critiques on my reviews. So, but without further ado, um, thank you Big Big One for sending me this controller. I'm still gonna do, of course, a fair review, give my honest opinion based off of my opinion, just let you know. My opinion is my opinion, your opinion may be your opinion. I just try to give stuff that I think is helpful and if you think I'm missing on something, just let me know. But anyway, thank you Big Big One for sending me out this Rainbow 2 Pro controller and um, yeah, let's unbox this co controller and let's see what's inside. So this controller is for PC and also works for Nintendo Switch and has the ability technically to work with like Xbox, maybe. Depends on uh, how Microsoft feels about the third party accessory thing, but we'll see. But without further ado, um, let's open up this controller or this box with the controller inside. All right, so opening this up, what you see is um, interesting. Uh, all right, you get the controller right here. And the controller is, wow, this is very comfortable. So this is just like the Bliss controller where they have two buttons on the side right here, which are mechanical keys. And they got the other two buttons right here that honestly for me sit perf like perfectly in my hands. Like it is extremely comfortable. Um, the joysticks, they do feel like the, the Blitz controller, which it's not, I have no problem with. I actually think these sticks are very comfortable. Definitely like them a lot. ABXY is, um, they're membranes, which, I mean, it's not like a mechanical keys, but it's not a bad feeling either. They're very responsive. D-pad, the D-pad sounds like it's mechanical keys and D-pad's good. It's a little small for me, but I do like it. And it looks like it's still got the same strip bar from the Blitz controller, so. I'm pretty sure that all the inputs on the Blitz controller will probably work on this. And I also noticed they got this like triangle button on the side, which the original Rainbow controller had. So I'm curious about if all the button combinations from the Rainbow has been simplified with this bar right here, but then they still included this probably for like, if you want to program gyro or, tr or hair triggers on this controller without using an app. This controller is though still, I heard it is still compatible with the app. And honestly, um, definitely like a these really good upgrade. It definitely feels great in the hands. Um, on the back of the controller, as you see, they have like this rubber rise grip right here, which feels extremely comfortable. And oh, you got trigger stoppers. Looks like you flip the trigger stoppers on, full squeeze. That's actually a good amount. That is a good amount took away a good like 60% of the pull away. So it's like a 30% pull instead of a 60. So yeah, I like it. Oh, and I have to say like, yeah, this controls really nice. Let's check out the rest of the accessories though. So it looks like you get a Octagon D-pad. I wonder, can I take the D-pad off? Can I? Come on. Yes, got the D-pad off. All right, let's see a uh, group. Yep, line right here, little lip right there. No. All right, got it. All right, yes, this D-pad, I definitely like better. I like much more than the other D-pad. The other D-pad's cool though, but yeah, I definitely like this D-pad better. I'm going to Set this one right here. Yeah, this D-pad, much better. I like this D-pad more. And also looks like you get joysticks as well. So, uh, let's see. Yep, these are definitely the 10, millim 10 millimeters. These might be eight millimeters, which means you got the six millimeters on the controller uh, default. So, yeah. So it looks like you get three sizes, different joystick sizes, which is really nice really like this 
Um, hold on. Okay, looks like the next thing you get is um, the dock station. So this dock station looks very similar to the dock station for the Blitz controller, but it looks like they also added a little, little piece right here. So it looks like you can probably plug in a dongle that does pass through USB-C or sorry, pass through USB port. So that way you can charge your controller and probably have your, oh, speaking of dongle or have your dongle plugged in here at the same time. So speaking of dongle, you get the dongle right here. So this is the dongle for the controller. It looks pretty similar to their um, other um, dongles that they use for basically using, let you use controllers on different consoles. Now this is said that it can work for the Xbox, but with Xbox releasing that third party um, hardware band, I'm not 100% certain that this will work. I hope this still works because this controller feels awesome. And normally what you do is you'll plug in your controller into wire connection into the back of here. You plug this into your Xbox and you can be able to use your uh, Rainbow 2 controller on your Xbox rather than your Xbox controller. But we'll see if this still works. So um, with that being said, I think that's everything in the box. Oh no, it's not. And of course you get the USB A to USB C cable. Looks like it's like three meters, so nothing crazy. And you get the pamphlet, which with this pamphlet, you will teach you how to connect the controller, switch the modes, description of light strips, remap, turbo, macro recording, simulate motion controls, onboard configuration, rocker dead zone, joysticks and trigger calibrations, gyroscope settings, audio vibration adjustment, battery instructions, and details on functional instructions, and also the tell you to download their software for the Bipic One app. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So I would have to say, um, holding the controller in the hands, um, I'm actually really excited to definitely plug this controller to my PC, um, do joystick accuracy test, do a um, input latency test, and just start playing games with this, because I also heard they improved the input latency Pro latency, so this is supposed to be like a two millisecond input latency. We will see in a thousand input latency, or I'm sorry, a one millisecond input latency when wire connection. So we'll find out. So without further ado, let's um play some games and just see how this controller is. And oh, this LED is not bad. I like this little LED ring. It looks cool. So yeah, let's play some games. As you see, I have the controller hooked up right here with all the buttons working perfectly fine. And um, looks like I'm about to do a joystick accuracy test. I've been flicking the joysticks around. And I see that it drops back down to 0002. But also I do notice that there is like a little bit of a slight input latency got that's or like a dead zone that's put into these sticks already. So I'm kind of curious about that. But um, so far so good. But let's test out the uh, circularity of these um, joysticks. So click that. Go in and uh, error rate of 4.4, 4.5. Let's see if I can get this any higher. Nope, it looks like I cannot get this any higher. So it looks like it has an error rate of 4.5, which um, looking at the circle is actually pretty even. I do know that this controller does have like a zero dead zone mode. So actually if I was to say for instance, hit this uh, little FN triangle button plus the stick, there we go. Now, as you see, I got the true values. And with the true values of the sticks, they're not too far off of the center, which I actually I like. So this is zero dead zone mode for this controller. Um, and then also just hold the FN button. I can turn the dead zone modes on. So now it's like 00 0.002. But um, yeah, I can actually knock this down probably to like a dead zone of maybe like, probably like two to 1% the way how these joysticks are set up. Cause this is actually extremely accurate. So that's a really good thing. But uh, let's go do an input latency test on this controller next. All right, guys, so here we are having the X input tester. So we're gonna do a simple input latency test using this controller is currently hooked up with the wireless dongle. So without further ado, let's do an input latency test. All right, I see a lot of threes, a lot of 3.8s, 3.9s. This is actually look pretty good. So looks like I have an input latency of 
5.03 with a pulling rate of 198 hertz. Interesting. I wonder if I had a crazy outlier. Um, the max was a 12, which probably threw this number off a little bit. But um, scrolling up and looking at all these numbers, um, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's mostly threes. I keep seeing a couple fours and sevens, but um, a decent uh, input latency for a wireless controller using a dongle. Okay, now we're going to switch over to using the um, wire connection and see how this controller performs. All right, guys. So here we are with X input tester, and now I have a wire connection. So let's test the input latency using a wire connection. That's great. Um, wow. A 0 0.097 input latency. Uh, 0 0.09 milliseconds average input latency with a pulling rate of 1029. This is great. This is actually makes this controller a great option for that eSport competitive scene. Um, I'm actually very impressed with this controller using a wire using a wire connection. So I guess the last thing to do now is to test the controller with a Bluetooth connection. All right, guys. So here we are with this controller now connected via Bluetooth to my PC. So I guess without further ado, we're going to test this input latency using Bluetooth mode. This is disgusting. Oh God, it's like it's trying to hit an eight millisecond input latency, but I'm seeing a lot of mixtures with the sevens and, ooh, uh, imp average input latency of 10 milliseconds with a pulling rate of 98. I see a couple of, of outliers uh, right here and Looking at this, it looks like it's trying to hit that eight millisecond input latency, but there's a bunch of sevens and fourteens in the way. Um, yeah, this is probably the worst out of all of the testing I did. So, if you want to use this controller for a competitive scene, um, I definitely suggest wire mode. Um, the dongle is okay if you're a casual player, and I guess it's Bluetooth mode. Um, if you have a dongle, I don't see the why you would use Bluetooth mode, but it's at least it's an option for you to have just in case something happens to your dongle. You can still game with the wireless controller, but yeah. Definitely wire connection is the best way to go with this controller. All right guys, so let me show you how to program one of the four mapable buttons on this controller. As you know, the controller has two mapable buttons that's right next to the triggers and two mapable buttons on the back of the controller right here. And to program is really simple. All you wanna do is just hit this button that's on the left side, like right around the left center. And you wanna hit this button plus the programmable button at the same time. You'll see that the FN button the LED will start going red. All you have to do is just hit one programmable button and there you go. Now I have one of the buttons mapped to the B button. And I can do the same thing for the rest of them where I can map A, where now I have A and B map. Do the same thing for X and Y. Get this mapped. And there you go. Now all of my um, buttons are, all my mappable buttons have been mapped to one of the A, B, X, Y for my controller. So really simple, really easy to do. All right, guys, so the next thing I'm going to show you is how to set turbo mode for this controller, which is actually really easy to do. So on the far left hand of this bar right here, you actually want to hit the turbo mode button plus the desirable, desirable button that you want to have turbo mode for. So for this one, I'm going to hit A, for example. So now turbo mode has been enabled. So as you see right now, I have it set to five inputs a second, which is really slow. If you want to speed it up, it's actually really simple. All you got to do is hold the FN button and press the left key on, or left on the D-pad. This increases from five input inputs inputs a second to tenths inputs a second. As you can see right now, it's a little bit faster. Now, if I do it one more time, I've now increased it from 10 inputs a second to 20 inputs a second. So that is how you set a turbo mode for this controller. And if you want to clear turbo mode, you can either two options. You can hold the button that has turbo mode and double click this twice. And this will turn back to a regular button, or you can double click this button right here without pressing any other buttons. That will clear turbo mode on all of the buttons. So yeah, this is actually a really easy process for you to set turbo mode for this controller. All right, guys, so you can also set macros for the programmable buttons that's on this controller. And it's actually really easy to set up. All you have to do is just hold one of the programmable buttons plus this macro button that's right here on this controller. So just hold that for about three seconds. Once you hear the feel the controller vibrate and the red LED goes on, you can record all your inputs. Now I was able to get around like uh, th uh, 33 inputs for one single macro recording. And as you see, it vibrates when it completes. So all you gotta do is just press the macro button and there you go. You now have your macro setup for um, this controller. Really easy, really simple, really easy to do. Now, if you also want to clear the macros, there's two ways you could do it. Of course you can 
hold the macro button and tap this thing twice or you could just tap this twice and this will clear all the macros um all for all the macros on all of the uh programmable buttons so real easy and last but not least you got the final button right here which is arguably probably one of the most important buttons this is your profile switcher so this will actually switch between the four settings so you can save up to four different profiles on this controller which is actually really good so that way if you have a fighting game you can switch to a fighting game profile if you have a racing game you can switch to the racing game profile and and vice versa so yeah just a really simple profile button nothing fancy all right so this controller is compatible with the desktop app that is called the big big one assistant app which i have right here so if you do order to open up this app you are going to have to connect your controller to your pc via usb key usb c to usb a cable for this to work and within this app you can uh, control all the configurations as such as motions you can control the stick curvage with the dead zones and everything else the trigger sensitivity and also set up hair triggers you can map all of the keys on the controller and you also can set turbo mode for each of the keys if you want to and you can control the vibrations of the left shake and the right shake if you want to be more aggressive if you want to be less aggressive you can do that you can also set macros for this controller you can actually control the uh, connection type where if you want to be an X input Input, a PlayStation input or a switch input if you want to and a PlayStation input I believe is a PS4 input so you can also control the um, hurt, how many Hertz do you want the controller to pull do you want it to be at 250 Hertz 500 Hertz or a thousand Hertz is up to you and you also can program the calibration for this controller if you will like I also want to talk about the uh, upgrading the firmware with this controller so this one you actually want to pay attention to so if you do not do this correctly there is a good chance that you can actually brick your controller, not necessarily brick it, but mess up your controller while doing the upgrading process. So if you want to upgrade your controller, you can select any of the firmware options here, click on upgrade. Now this is going to take a minute, so just let it go through its upgrading process and we'll get back to you. Once that this, um, the update upgrade has completed, as you see, the controller is off. So this is going to be the interesting part about this um, after you complete the up, download the update for this controller. You actually want to hold the power button for up to about 10 seconds and or until the controller vibrates. So now the controller is on, you still want to keep your finger on the, on the guide button because it's not done applying the upgrade yet. So it'll go off again, it will come back on, and then it will vibrate. So now that the controller vibrated, that's how you know that the controller is truly done with this upgrade. And you also still have to go in and still have to calibrate your joysticks and the gyros, the triggers and the gyroscope. So it's really important that you do this part because right now everything is all out of sync. Usually do that in the calibration. So now you gotta go back, make sure you get your gyro, gyro um, set. So make sure you set on the level table, start the calibrations. This calibrations for the gyro shouldn't take too long. So right now it's calibrating. It is now done. And there, that is how you fully upgrade the firmware on this controller. That one thing that is really important that this instructions don't tell you is to hold the guide button until the controller turns on turns off and turns back on again and vibrates it is a crucial that you do that or else you will mess up your controller with the firmware update and it will not work as intended so but yeah that's it for the um that is it for the desktop app all right guys so the big big one rainbow 2 controller also has a mobile app that's compatible which is the big big one assistant mobile app that you could download on ios and androids um just like all the other uh big big one controllers this is just one of the app supports the rainbow 2 as well so after you open up the app you can honestly just click on your controller and it will find your controller via bluetooth connection even if your controller is connected to a different device with a wire connection or a dongle you don't have to worry the phone will still find it and just like the desktop app you can configure all of the settings such as motion stick drift triggers and key mapping with turbo mode if you want to you also can program macros just like the desktop app and the cool thing about the mobile app is that you can actually configure the uh, leds on the controller from the app and for some reason you can only do this from the app so basically you can switch the color if you want to 
and you can even make custom colors which is really cool so if you want like a little custom color layout you can set that up and you can either save it and then you keep that on your profile and yeah that's pretty much it about the mobile app it's a really cool feature to have it kind of sucks that the mobile app is the only way that you can control the leds for the controller but um it works pretty well so without further ado um let's move on with this video after using this controller for three months here are my thoughts about this controller first off i would like to say that i really love the gyro of this controller so big big one controllers are usually very good when it comes to their gyros built into their like gyro controllers and accessories and this controller is no exceptions i really do enjoy using the gyro functions of this controller for racing games and also using the instant gyro function for first person shooters such as killing floor it is a really great controller to use for uh, gyro functions even though that this controller does not have like mechanical keys or like the Hall Effect joysticks, which is like the new biggest, greatest thing to combat stick drift, after using this controller heavily for multitudes of different games from first person shooters to uh, action adventure games, I have to say that the joysticks hold up very well. Even when I put this controller in zero dead zone mode, it is really, 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 really great. And the joysticks have yet to wore down after like three to four months of heavy uses playing Call of Duty, uh, playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and other games like that. I really do have to say like, don't uh, discount this controller for not having all of that joysticks or mechanical keys. This is still a very valuable option when it comes to third party controllers that gives you the extra boost of functionality. I also like how versatile this controller is. The fact that you can controller that you can configure all of the buttons using all of the button props on the controller, also given the ability to configure the controller using a mobile app and also configure the lighting of the controller is also great. And they also have a desktop app that gives you another way of how to configure the controller using a desktop app and that includes updating the firmware of this controller even though the firmware process they kind of need to explain that a little bit better but the fact that you have all these different options on how to customize and program this controller make this like an excellent option for people who are looking for a controller with a bunch of different capabilities and in a bunch of different case scenarios where if they don't have access to a desktop at least they have access to the to their phone they can still update their controller if they don't have access to a phone but have access to a desktop they can update their controller and they can still use all the onboard configurations to customize this controller making this controller like extremely versatile versatile which is a big thumbs up in my book so i do have a little bit of a small gripes with this controller for example um even though that you can use a mobile app and desktop app to configure all the settings on this controller there are two things that you cannot do depending on which app you use like for example for the desktop app you cannot configure the light settings at all on this controller with the desktop app which is an interesting uh, configuration i don't know why you can't do it on the desktop app but you just simply can't and on the mobile app you can configure the lighting settings. As a matter of fact, the low app is the only way you can configure the lighting settings for this controller, but you cannot update the firmware of the controller with the mobile app, which for me is like an interesting choice. I don't know why Big Big One has it where one app could do one thing and another app can do another. And it's an it's interesting to me, but I'm pretty sure if Big Big One they can make it where the mobile app and the desktop app can do everything that that the other app can do and vice versa so that way you can have a option to either go to your phone or go to the desktop app to do the configurations also there's another thing with this controller um turn on the gyro functions for the controller using the controller inputs so if you're supposed to be able to press fn button plus hold l3 or r3 to turn on gyro and turn off gyro it seems to be that functionality doesn't work honestly more so if you just uh no matter how long you hold l3 or r3 all it does is it turns on um zero dead zone mode on both of the joysticks i'm not sure this is a configuration flaw but it's something i have encountered and it's been going on for the past three to four months so i'm pretty sure big big one can fix this with a firmware update um even though that when you do the firmware update make sure you listen to that desktop option about how to do a firmware update because it's easily it's easy to break this controller but um yeah i'm pretty sure with the firmware update they can fix that setting where to make it where you can activate the gyro functions natively on the controller instead of like having to go to the mobile app or the desktop app to activate the gyro functions yeah if i was to give this controller like a one through ten um i kind of know for giving a lot of controllers eight out of ten 
Part of me wants to give this controller like a 7 out of 10 or a 6 out of 10 just because of, you know, doesn't have Hall Effect joysticks, but I cannot argue with the performance of this controller. Um, I'm going to give you, even though you have your small grass, I'm going to give you a 7.5 out of 10. Like, you are on, this controller is honestly a solid controller to use, and the versatility of this controller is amazing. Even though this controller doesn't have mechanical keys or the Hall Effect joysticks, it's still a great option for people who are PC players. Heck, it's even a great option if you're an Xbox person, if you just plug your Xbox controller into the dongle with the USB cable and use this as your main controller. Um, I did test this before on my friend's Xbox. That functionality seems to work still. So yeah, this makes this controller a very valuable option for Xbox and also using this on Nintendo Switch is actually pretty cool too. So yeah, a very versatile controller. Um, I do highly recommend this controller and big big one thank you for sending me this controller even though it took me forever to come out with this review but within that time I was using this controller excessively and I have to say I really do enjoy this product it is a great option for um, all gamers out there all right guys so that is it for this video if you found this video very helpful for you you should do me a favor like this video and also subscribe to this channel i know my uh posting of video content has been very sporadic lately um i was basically going through a little hiatus but don't worry i am back and i got a lot of controllers i still have to review so this and again thank you big big one for sending me out this controller um again if you like the big big one controller i'll leave a link in the description of where you can purchase this controller off the official big big one website and also i'll leave an amazon link as well but um yes um definitely like subscribe hit that notification bell and look forward to more controller reviews because i'm actually about to dive into a different realm of controllers that i think that should get some recognition so until then i'll see you guys next time peace